Hi y'all, just cleaning up after I uh, had a neighbor over for some wood turning. Today we got a fun project. We're going to turn a basic slip fit Aiken box. They're a lot of fun and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great skill builder for a novice wood turner. Okay, let's get suited up with my uh, do-rag, my gator to keep shavings uh, up out of my shoes, put on my smock and head over to my special wood stash. Okay, we've got our two, two cut blocks of wood. We're going to start with a piece of walnut. First thing I'm going to do, clean out my, make sure my morse taper is, is clean. I'm going to put in my stab drive center and my live center. Decide which end is going to be the uh, tenon. I don't think it makes much difference, except I see maybe, maybe a small crack here. So that's going to be, wind up being the area that's going to be waste from from the chucking and then hopefully it won't go, won't go into the the box at all we always do the lid first that's the normal sequence for an overfitting lid okay here's our normal box making sequence for an overlid box we're going to do the lid then we're going to do the base then we're going to uh, jam fit the lid onto the base to to finish the top of it then after we do that, we can finish hollowing out the, uh, our, by then we've actually hollowed out the uh, base. We'll actually then jam chuck the base as we turn it around to clean up the end of the, the acorn. So, so I proceed to use a spindle roughing gouge to rough out that block of walnut. And then I use a beating and parting tool to put a tenon on the end. I keep this tool very sharp. Takes a peeling cut. All right, time to take this off. Put it in a chuck. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and round off the base since I've got both live center and drive center in there. Just more efficient. And I round it off quickly. You can see the view moving my body, doing Turner's dance, and again using my beading and parting tool. It's eight millimeters, not quite three eighths inch, but I can take that tenon in one pass. So I take it off. Now I go ahead and put on my chuck with the 35 millimeter jaws. It's just right for these smaller kind of projects. And then I put in what's going to be the lid, tighten it, turn the chuck around and tighten it on the other side. Don't Squeeze it as tight as I can, just a, a good, good snug fit. Bring up the tool rest. And then I proceed to round over the front. I find it's easier to do this now, and I'll show you why in just a, just a moment. I bring up the base just to see if they're they are the approximate size since I just picked up a couple of pieces of wood and now I'm shaping the back just a little bit let's get a just make sure I got that outside dimension where I want it to be just a large bead notice how I'm twisting lifting and then swinging the handle around All right, now I'm going to take a box scraper and I'm just going to come in here, oh, maybe uh, a little over an eighth of an inch at a slight incline. And that will help this, uh, disguise the, uh, the join. And then I proceed to hollow with a 3 8 inch spindle gouge with about a, oh, I think it's got about a 55 degree grind where it's Normally, I would use a 40 degree grind. It makes short work of things like this, where I'm not going too, too deep. When it gets deeper, I need to switch to a different tool when I start getting a little chatter. Now I'm going to use a uh, small negative rake scraper, 
quarter inch thick, maybe half an inch wide, and just to kind of smooth up the cuts. You can see from the shavings, it does a very nice job on polishing the inside so it takes minimum uh, sanding. I can do the inside about 220. To keep the price point down, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to embellish. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. So I'm going to come in here now and lining that uh, long side up of the bedway and come straight in to get those parallel, uh, parallel recess. And then I just kind of round over the corner there where I've got a little lip inside. And then I'm going to put some sanding lubricant on some sandpaper. I'm going to go only go to about 220 or 240. Uh, after I finish, I'm going to I use this point tool. And I'm just not doing any fancy embellishment, just a couple of rings. Now I'm using some uh, homemade abrasive uh, paste to do the final finishing of any scratches and polish it. And I probably won't put a finish on the inside of this box. This wax surface will be, be just fine. And I use a clean one to make sure I've got all the residue off. I just lift it, you know, check it. Then I'm coming behind it, giving myself a little more clearance to finish shaping the back of the box. Again, lift, twist, turn. You can see that motion a little bit better here while I'm riding the bevel. And when I, you see when I finish that the grind, the bevel is almost perpendicular to the wood. And the handle is, is across my body at almost 45 degrees. And then I go through the sanding grips. The outside I take it up to about 320, whereas the inside I stop at about 220. Now I'm just clearing off the waste that's going to be the stem. Again, using that beating parting tool because it takes the uh, 3 8 inch, almost a 3 8 inch cut at one pass. And then since it's like a skew, I can kind of do a little clean up on the top of the box. And then I use a thin parting tool to part this off. And I'm leaving myself plenty of room there to finish that stem later. I usually drop these. Now I put in the base. First thing we're going to do the base is, base is establish the tenon. So I take a smoothing cut and then I measure the inside of the lid and then transfer that measurement to the outside for the tenon. In this case I'm almost on target. I don't even want to spin it and mark it. I just got to come down just a little bit. And I'm facing off the what will be the top of the box first. Then I come back and take that tenon down just a, just a little bit. And I incline it just slightly to the front to do successive approximation. And after several tries, I get it where it's a good, really tight, tight fit because I don't want it to spin. Tight enough where I have to tap it on. Got to be very careful though not to split your box so there's a, a tight rope you walk there. Here I'm cutting the top. You see I'm riding that bevel, getting a nice smooth cut. And then I'm finishing the finial handle. Go through my grits, go through my uh, abrasive, homemade abrasive paste. I'll have a video link to that here. How uh, you make that stuff. Yorkshire grit I really like better. I use crystal coat uh, for these kind of projects. It's fast and quick. It's a shellac paste or you can use OB Shine juice. One third alcohol, one third uh, boil linseed oil and one third alcohol, denatured alcohol. And it pops right off. We'll refine that fit a little bit later. So now I do the outside of the box. Now I'm going to use this one inch high speed steel dr drill bit. I don't normally use this for these, but for this I was just experimenting because I think this might be faster for the small box to drill out the inside. Of course I mark it with, with tape. You can see it leaves the walls pretty thick, so I've still got to come back and do some smoothing. But rather than a portion of it, which will leave a hole in the bottom, this one has a fairly nice profile for the bottom of an acorn box. It works pretty well. I got this from an industrial supplier. Now I'm using my uh, Harbor Freight depth gauge and transferring the inside depth to the outside. 
always important in our box. You don't want to go through and make a funnel out of it. So now I'm using this scraper to kind of, kind of clean it, clean that, clean the walls down, and try to get a nice clean finish. Now I'm putting in a dowel that's got some cotton on it and uh, wrapped with sandpaper. I've got different grips. They last a while on boxes. You stick it in there. Now I'm not going in very deep with this 220 grit. I'm just getting on, right on the inside of the rim. And then I start uh, parting down a little bit at the back with an eighth inch parting tool just to give myself a little rum to refine the, the base and, and come back and refine that lip just a little bit so it, it'll be less than a Oh, maybe about an eighth inch thick again so it will hide that reveal against that flat spot. Here I'm just double checking that depth. I left the marker set. And then I'm just kind of getting rid of some waste wood here. Go through my sanding uh, grip again to 320 and use some abrasive, uh, abrasive paste and fill with the grain between each grit. And it pops on snugly, so I'm just going to refine that fit a little bit using a little 220. It's a safe, easy way. And then I get rid of the, the bottom. I'm speeding up here a little bit to show you that. I'm just wasting some wood here before I part it off with a thin parting tool. And I'm able to catch this. Notice I leave enough room at the bottom, so if I get any fiber tear off, it's not going to be a problem. And that's sometimes a problem with spindles. I'm chucking up a piece of uh, construction 2x4 pine that's going to be my uh, jam, jam chuck. Transfer the, the uh, size. I'm using my box scraper. You can see that angle on it. The tip of it is less than 90 degrees. And then I line up that long line with a bed way and, and go in there. And, and after a couple of fits, I get a perfect fit. I can just tap this in with a handle. And this runs perfectly true because it registers against the face of that, that flank. And now I just kind of refine the outside of that, that acorn, getting a, just a tiny little OG with a point, but not a real sharp point. And then I go through the sanding grits, go through the abrasive paste, go through the uh, shiny, shiny cells. So this kind of finish works well on the little products like this. Now here, I'm having a hard time getting this out because it's so snug, but i got a trick I want to show you. I come in with a thin parting tool that's about a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. Don't go in very deep or I'm able to hit the lip of the, uh, of the box, but it gives me a place that I can leverage that parting tool at a couple of places so it's wood against wood so I don't scratch, scratch it. And I know there's other ways I can drill holes in the bottom and I can spray it with air, but this works fast and easy. Now this, this finish takes about 24 hours to cure, so I'm trying not to touch it. Okay, in this, in this video, I was trying to get my uh, speed up a little bit on a box that was a little less refined. When I say less refined, here's one that I'd say more refined, where I've used a, a uh, knurling tool to texture the outside. It's got this nice little raised bead. It's got a much more refined uh, stem. On the inside, I've done some decorating. I've put in some uh, gold wax. The thickness is going to be a little bit more refined. Uh, the finish may be a little bit more, more refined. Uh, but this is still a nice little box. And the one I made earlier today. And I got my process down where I can make these boxes. And, uh, oh in less less than an hour so I've got the price point down whereas otherwise I might have for for a larger box uh, threaded box it could easily take two and a half hours if y'all are interested in a a more sophisticated threaded box I've got a <laughs> I've got a, a link here uh, to a video with a large threaded box y'all stay safe come on back here